This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And you know, those of you that have been with us, we have talked about all kinds of things, but mainly about the opportunity to discuss the end of life and the care we want. However, today we are on another journey, <laughs> a different journey, with a dear friend of mine, and you all know that I only talk to dear friends, <laughs> a dear friend of mine, <laughs> Sharon Moriarty. Now, Sharon, Yes, nice Aloha. to be here. Yes. <laughs> nice to be here, Marsha. Um, I first met Sharon. Oh my! <laughs> You're going to go way back. Yeah, way back. <laughs> so, you know, so so we are. You know, like I said, she's a dear friend. Uh, Sharon went to work for Governor John Waihee. So right. when was that? That was in 1980. 86, 82, thereabouts. Some point in the Yes, that. somewhere in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. So what did you do? You were. At first, I was the deputy director for the Department of Labor. So I handled all the legislation for the department and worked with uh, mostly internally with the staff. Uh, and then in the second term, I uh, was a personnel director for the state. Wow. So moved from employment to employment of the state employees. And now you are doctor. I am. Yes. yes. <laughs> Even though we, we tend to slide <laughs> yes, over right. this. So that, um, but I think it ought to be, you ought to call attention to that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you were also, I think in 80, it was in the 80s that you were the director of the coordinated campaign for the uh, yes. Democratic Party. It was with, the, actually it was an interesting time because we had both the coordinated campaign and the governor, uh, presidential campaign with, with Dukakis. Yes. So the two melded, so I was really focusing on the Dukakis campaign while Joe Lim, who was a co-worker co with me on, on that, co-coordinator, was working on the coordinating campaign. So together, uh, we were in the office working on both campaigns. That is the first coordinated campaign that I remember. Me too. I was like to tell the audience about my one little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I was elected that the elector, one of the four electors uh -huh. from Hawaii. And due to you and your work, we were the only state that went for the caucus. <laughs> <laughs> the only state that went for And big time. Big time, yeah. <laughs> so, so I said, well, as an elector, I wanted to go to D.C. Now, the electors don't go to D.C. The, that, the electoral college happens at the capital of your state. Mm -hmm. But I said, I want to go to D.C. I want to see an inauguration. And so I collected from the state, from Hawaii, you know, pineapple, lay. Mm -hmm. The state mm -hmm. gave us all of these wonderful things to take mm -hmm. to D.C. So I, when I get there and unloaded with all of this stuff. So I got to the Capitol, because I had RSVP that I was, you know, all of the things. So this young, young Howley kid is sitting there and I go to check in with all the other people for my seat and everything. And I told him my name. And he said, funny, you don't look like a Republican. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh no, <laughs> really? <laughs> Well, I'm not. And he looked at me. <laughs> Poor baby, you know, he didn't know what to do. And, and anyway. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> so, so here I am loaded with all of the boxes. You know how they pack yeah. the lay and everything. Oh. So somebody came and said, well, uh, 
the vice president is, is here. Would you like to see him? So this was before Bush was inaugurated mm. to be president, right? Uh -huh. So I went to his office, and he was sitting there alone. Oh. And they, <laughs> as the movers, were taking stuff out of his office, right? And he was so charming and so sweet. Uh -huh. And we talked about Hawaii and, you know, about him uh, being in the Navy and mm. being shot down and all. Just gentle. So he gave me the souvenir book and autographed it. Uh -uh. But that, and then Senator, Cox, uh, Senator Inouye said to me when I got, he said, you don't want to sit outside. You come and watch the inauguration. of my." I said, I did not come this far to sit in your office and watch on television. You know, I'm going to sit in the cold, and I am going to be miserable. But I, <laughs> if I wanted to watch it on television, I would have stayed home. <laughs> But it was, yeah, oh, that, that was my little Dukakis <laughs> memory. <laughs> We're the only ones. <laughs> it was. It was a very interesting time. It was, you know, we really thought we, we were going for a win, but no, it well, was not meant we to would be. The only state. That, That's the, right. The we only did. state. Oh, no, I think Massachusetts. Did Massachusetts is Boston, right? So, yeah. Yeah, I think we were one of two. Two, yeah. <laughs> His state and our state. <laughs> Uh, it, it, but it was, yeah, I will always remember that young man. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> I'm sure it's after he said it, he was trying to. So tell us now yeah. mm -hmm. all about you since that time. Wow, it's been a long journey. <laughs> Uh, and um, all, all of my, my whole career has been in public service. So from the day of the um, being in, in the governor, in Governor Y. Hayes' cabinet all the way through. So once I left the cabinet, I did take a short stint um, with the uh, judiciary. I was a chief of staff for um, C.J. Moon. And after a year, uh, I left that and went to the university. So I've been at the university now for about 20 years, I think. <laughs> I was first in administration, then in the College of Social Sciences. Uh, in the College of Social Sciences, uh, we created what's called the Public Policy Center. And at that center, it was meant to enhance the uh, community life and, and the, the um, collaboration between town and gown which really doesn't happen too often at the university. And so it was moving the university to the community, community to the university. So a number of programs uh, were meant to pull together, like the Energy Policy Forum on which um, Jay sits. Uh, it was to create a more collaborative way of operating and for state government to come up with policies that were much more meaningful to the community. Say that again. Community, gown to community, community. community town and gown. So town, town and gown. was like the downtown, yes. and um, gown is like the gown, you know, academics, right. and coming together with that. Because too often they say ivory tower, you know, you right. stick in the, at, at, the, at the gown level. And this idea uh, was really generated from my previous dean, Dick Dumanowski, who really wanted to create something that the university would be a real present member of the community and, and improve the community. Does that include legislation? It does. So a lot of work that I've done has been with the legislature. So I go to session each year um, looking at, well, my, my area of, of interest has been sustainability, clean energy. And so that's where my space is when I go to the legislature, although clean community energy. development is, is important. And, and, yeah. Um, and what do you mean community development? What else? What it's, does that look so we, like? We, so we work with communities, for example, one of my, so we develop projects. So I will write a grant or I will bring communities together and see what they need. And if we have university resources that I can tap for free, I'll try to do that. Uh, but it's really creating, um, empowering communities to do what they need to do to get, to get what they need to have done. So one project, for example, um, way back was um, um, trying to get students to learn about the environment. So I got a small grant from Hawaii Community Foundation 
to teach students about the streams and clean the streams and water quality and worked with uh, teachers at um, two elementary schools, a middle school and a high school. Um, and we got money enough to take students all the way up to the Ahupua and come down and teach the teachers uh, the kind of resources we had at, at the Board of Water what is the Department of Water Supply. Water, water supply. Water supply. Yes. Yeah, it's old name. Um, dates me. Uh, <laughs> and, and Department of Health and, uh, and really teach them how do you test for water quality. Um, and, and we took 200 students up to the uh, top of Punchbowl um, and, and they could see the whole Ahupua. And you know, when we took them up, this was the thing, they had never been outside their little Makiki stream area. Of course. <laughs> and and, and there, you could hear it pin drop. They were so in awe of what they could see, you know, down the valley into well, the ocean. Not just them, but anybody, anybody. that goes up there. It, it is, yeah. it is just it really incredible. It is breathtaking. It is. Yeah. And this is why I'm running too, because I want to keep it that way and not have us forget that this is paradise. This is something that we really should be protecting. It should be. Yeah. Now, you are running for what office? Senate District 12. That covers, it's a big district. It covers Waikiki, Aumuana, Makali, Mo'ili'ili, and Kaka'ako. That is big. The whole urban uh, oh, expanse. Yes. Yeah. So, tell me, what do you think of this new Kaka'ako? <laughs> how much time? How much time <laughs> on this show? <laughs> when you drive through it, as an old timer, I've watched this change and change and change, and it's like, <gasps> oh, uh, I know. Well, you know, it, it all started in Kaka'ako for me. I've been there for about ten years, when we first moved in. Um, it, you know, it, it, it really was not developed, and, and it, it could have been done. We have a plan. It, Governor Ariyoshi, actually, during his term, um, created what was called the Community Development District. So Kaka'ako is one of those 600 acres in the downtown area that was to be uh, meeting the highest and best needs of our people. So helping to develop affordable housing, so that people working downtown, people working in Waikiki would have a house or, or at least a condo or an apartment building to live in. Uh, and it would be mixed use, mixed density, so it would be a community, parks and open space. Well, that plan existed and during the Abercrombie administration, I guess they wanted to push building, so a lot of the development came up and, they, and that's when I got involved was that they were building, but they weren't building according to the rules. They were getting what was called modifications. And it was going through, and the community was kind of left in the, the dust. And that's when we said, you know, we've got to make changes here because it's not kind of Hawaii we want, so. No. Well, now, way, way, you know Lillian Hong. Yes. The little people. Yes. One day I saw her, I was over at another station, and. I saw her in the corner. She was mad as a hornet. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, this will people. And I said, well, what is the problem? I am going to get that Mayor Harris. I am going to do this. I said, what, what happened? Well, the street that she had the jewelry store on. Is that the bow belts? <laughs> and, no, this was long no, before that. <laughs> this was during the Harris administration. Uh, uh, uh. And they had taken that street that she had her jewelry store on and got rid of all those little vendors. And mm -hmm. she was so mad. So I said, well, did you, would you come on my show and talk about it? Because I knew nothing about what was going on in Gaga. She said, oh, yes. And she was just going to get the mayor for the, for the little people. They are tearing up Kaka'ako, and he doesn't know each other. And she went on and on and on. Well, she's run for mayor every year since then. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's OP. But that was the beginning of the change of Kaka'ako. And with, because of her, I have really paid attention and watched mm -hmm. as it has changed and changed and changed. Yeah. And I, I, we, of course, on the news, we see people 
uh, watching and testifying before the, uh, the, the community the development, development authority, yeah. but no one pays attention to them. Well, this new board, I must say, I have to give a plug for this new board. Um, they're wonderful. It is one of the best boards, I keep saying, in the state, and all boards should be like that. They have professional people on the board, people committed to the community. So when we testify now, unlike the old board, right. we can actually be heard, and they ask questions, and they deliberate. And when they make decisions, and this is what I love, when they make decisions, each person will stand up for their decision. They'll say, I'm voting for this because, I'm voting against this because, or I have reservations because. And so it's very transparent. And so why, why can't we have a law that says yes, all boards, boards must do this? Everybody should be working this way. Well, you know, we have to take a break. <laughs> and when we come back, Let's talk about you and where you want to go from here. We talked about yesterday. Let's talk okay. about tomorrow. Okay? Okay. Sounds good. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others. And in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. Aloha, welcome to Hawaii. This is Prince Dykes, your host of the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys each and every Tuesday at 11 a.m. right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Don't forget to come by and check out some of the great information on stocks, investings, your money, all the other great stuff. And I'll be here and uh, Kapolei. We're back. Hi, <laughs> Marcia. And we are visiting with my dear friend, <laughs> Sharon for Senate. Correct. Uh, yes. So tell us, Sharon, where we go, where do you see going from here? Well, Why is it that you, after all these years, <laughs> have decided to run for Senate? What, what, hmm. where do you see this going? Well, you know, as, as I said earlier, my whole career has been in public service. Right. It's been in administration, it's been at the university studying <laughs> policies and putting policies together and relying on people in in the policy making arena to take it forward. And quite frankly, over the last 10 years, I haven't seen it. It's not improving to my liking. Right. So I've asked young people to please think about running, but everybody has a family, they have a job, they have their careers. Uh, and couldn't find really anybody to run for this office, but I felt there was time for a change because we had not been represented um, in the last 10 years because we see the growth of all these condos without thinking about what's, what's the spaces between the condos, where are the parks, where's the open space, what's protecting our shoreline, what's protecting our kupuna. And, and I didn't see enough happening that when I walk and I see people struggling and they can't make a living or they're afraid to go outside because of the homeless or because of crime or being burgled, then, then you know something is wrong with that picture. That government is really not doing its job and they need to start representing the people who pay their salaries. Well, uh, just a couple of days ago, driving down Ala Moana Boulevard, it does not look like Hawaii. That's true. Yes. All of those million dollar condos along there, it is just like any other major yeah. American city. New it York, does not look like Miami, Hawaii. Right? Yeah. And, 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 it sh and, and that was one of the things, the variances, I call them variances because they're hard to get, but they call them modifications, which are easier to get. That was supposed to be a uh, majority of the building was supposed to be commercial. So it was, you know, you could, you could have diversity in heights and, and in uh, the kinds of activities that, that would happen. 
but they it is now ninety percent residential because that's where you make your money of course over top of bird off goodman can you imagine living over top yeah and and it's blocking views of people the local people are being squeezed out there that really is building for offshore investors and not building for housing so you have high rise one point five million is the average price of a unit and then on the streets you have the homeless yes and that disconnect it should not be happening i think that we will rue the day when that happened because we are growing a generation of terrorists when you have hawaiians living on the beach and they look across the street at these two million dollar places mm -hmm. that are displacing them their homeland we have to know that we are growing a generation of terrorists this will come the back anger to is, is just boiling it's yes. ready to erupt it's, yes. it, it will come back to bite us in the butt mm -hmm. so back to you okay so what I'd like to see is that funds actually go to serve the people now instead of, okay, I believe in rail. I think that there was a way in which we couldn't just get more and more cars and be so congested that, that there needed to connect our whole, our whole uh, island. But it's been so mismanaged. And from $4 billion, oh. you go to $10 billion and climbing, something's wrong with that picture. And, and it's... it's it's actually sucking all of the funds, whatever funds we've given to the common coffers, and not taking care of the kapuna, not taking care of our infrastructure, not taking care of our shoreline, not taking care of affordable housing that people need for our own residents. And, and all of that, and education, and all of that is not happening because all of these funds are being sucked up, and we don't know who's budgeting what. And I think it has to be much more transparent and people have to wake up and well, see what's happening. Okay. Now, the plans for the rail were originally to the university. So, for my little ordinary brain, how are we going to get the train, the, the rail, through all of those $2 million condos out to... Good question. Um, Good question. Yes. How do, and if I had one of those, and you're going to run a train in my view plane, how, how does that work? Who, how, now the people that built these knew that the rail was planned. So how did they get around that? Well, be, because part of that, there was this plan and kept on replanning the plan. Um, but it, but they had this, this, I, I, the way they, they operate is, okay, we're going to come through, and we're going to have eminent domain, and we're going to come through your property. And it's, it's going through people, especially in the urban area. If they had started earlier, they could have planned it much better when nothing was built. Well, right. But now you're disrupting all of these businesses. These are small business businesses, people yes. that they're going through their property. So you have these little small business people protesting, and they're not being heard. And again, it's it's big developers that are are taking taking you know stock and saying, oh, I can build here, I can leave my property fallow, uh, and then when rail comes along, I'll make up because it's a passive investment. So all of this is happening when people are are struggling to even make a living who are in those properties. Mm -hmm. So so I think th this is this is why I think it's very important for people to be aware and and not say oh cuz when I talk to people oh cannot help you know that's the way it is. It's not. You can make a difference. A small group of committed people, people can make a difference and make change. And I think that's what we have to do is start waking people up in the community. If your legislator is not really representing you and not taking care that you are, are your interests are being being heard and something's being done about change them. Well, change them, right? I, I have to, I have to give them. you I have to give you my stump speech. Right? Because I'm, I'm out registering people to vote. I have my stump speech. I said, when you go to the Capitol, you look up at all of those offices, and all of them are filled. But they didn't get filled. The only way they got filled is on a low turnout. And if you want to change that, 
It's got to be That's a right. large turnout. That's right. They and last election, fifty-one House members, thirty ran unopposed. So you, That's it, right? Yep. So the only way to change, make change, because they figure they can do anything they want because there's no price to pay for it. There's right. no penalty. Right. And, and democracy is made up of competition. competition. It's and made up right of the competition of ideas, of, of people representing different groups, and having that conversation, that dialogue, to churn it all up and say, what's the best thing for the majority mm, yes. of us? Yeah. And so we have, people have to understand that it is, we need a large turnout. They say, oh, Hawaii th doesn't, turn out, well, of course not, if there's nothing to vote for. That's right. We have to That's give right. them something to right. vote for. Right, right. You've and got to make, it's got to make them understand that, that it's, it's not who you, it's not who you vote for. It's, it's getting people to feel that, that, that they can make a difference. Yeah. That they, they have a stake have in this. A stake yes. in this. That it's it's not. Oh, okay. Well, let them do that. Well, let them do that is why we're complaining about what's happening, right? Yes. <laughs> so he's got to connect the dots and say we've got to do something about it and vote, vote, vote. And one last thing to all of those people out there that it is not enough. Now I, I tell everybody I'm a political junkie, so that this is nothing <laughs> new. It is not enough to vote for someone. Okay, now that you voted for them, you gotta put Keep your foot in their head. butt. That's right. Let them know, sure. I own you. That's right. I donated to you, I voted for you, I held signs That's for right. you, I expect this, this, and this that's from you. Right. That's right, and, and I think that that's what's not happening is that okay. we're not being held accountable. Down. Yes. No. Yes. And we have to. When we watch the legislature, you know they are not being held accountable. Yeah. That's very important. Yes. Yeah. And to reach a point where they said, oh God, here she comes. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. See, because, because I'll tell you one, one example. I, I've been walking and, and this one, um, he's a retired policeman in, in, in the district. And I said, you know, I said, I'm giving you a choice. He said, oh, that's right. That's really a gift. But he said, oh, you're going to be like everybody else. He says, once I give you my vote, you're never going to come back. I said, oh, no, 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 I won't be sorry. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> So yeah, I think it's it you got to build the relationships within within the community so that they feel that I have I have a phone call away to you yes. and I have complaints and I want to see some action mm -hmm. and you report back. Yes, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. I saw one young man, honestly, uh, he's running for office, and I was so pleased when he said to the lady he was going door to door, and he said. You pay my salary. I want to know. She said, what are you going to do? And he said, no, you pay my salary. Oh, I want to know what you want me to do. That's great. And I thought, that's yeah. a great young man. We that's should train great, more of those young yet. people. <laughs> well, we are out of time. But you will come back well, and visit will? with us I again. Know, my <laughs> dear friend. <laughs> <laughs> we will. And we will see you again soon. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you for inviting me, Marcia. Enjoyed it.